Well, thank you for joining us on tonight. Welcome to the Alive Experience. I'm Lady E, and this is Pastor Roman D, and we pastor Alive Church in Kansas City, Missouri. We're so excited to have you join us tonight. You can find more information about us and Alive Church at thealivechurchkc.com. You can also follow us on our social media, The Alive Church KC. We're on Facebook and YouTube, so be sure to subscribe. I'm so excited for tonight. We begin our series of faith in love. Have you been hurt by love? Or so we say. Have you have you experienced the pain of being in love? And so I think it's imperative that we talk about love. What is the source of love? Where did love come from? Is God love? Does God love me? And so all these things we will talk about in these series. So I want you to grab your pen, your pad, grab your iPad, whatever it is you take notes, your phone, and I want you to take real good notes as we dive into this message is titled Faith in Love. And so today we're going to, in, in this first part of faith in love, we're going to dive into what is love. It, it, this is a question. And the truth of the matter is that everyone has their opinions about the subject. <laughs> so everyone has an idea of what love is. And, and well, not everyone. Some people still don't have a clue of what love is. And so today we want to dive in what is love? And so we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about, let's first, we're going to deal with what does Webster's Collegiate Dictionary say love is? And we're going to hit a few of these definitions. I'll put them on the screen for you. Webster's Collegiate uh, uh, Dictionary uh, says this is what love is. A strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. Attraction based on sexual desire. Affection and tenderness felt by lovers. Affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interest, warm att attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion. The object of attachment, devotion, or adoration, a beloved person, unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another. Oh my goodness. That that is that is a mouthful right there. That has a whole lot. And and so and so basically what is letting us know that that from Western's de definition there's a wide range <laughs> of how how America sees uh love. Yeah. And so and so what we had to do we said okay, that's Webster's uh collegiate dictionary. What the hood say? What the hood saying? So I definitely had to pull up my Urban Dictionary. Let's find the Urban Dictionary says one: love is something you give someone to. You give someone to. Love is caring for that person or animal or anything, no matter what. Two: you cannot explain it, but all you know is you will never be the same. It's a beautiful feeling. You can't imagine life without them. Uh, my definition of love would be when you get that feeling for someone, that feeling being the feeling of butterflies in your stomach, the feeling of knowing that someone <laughs> uh, out there cares for you, and the feeling of being uh, kindness and generosity. And then finally, this is my definition of love. Every time you see and talk to this person, you get butterflies in your stomach you start to feel a bundle of emotions you would do anything for this person including taking a bullet for them you cannot function without them if they left nothing would be the same <laughs> everything would be ruined oh my goodness oh my goodness and so and so we got a wide range of, of what love is and so since we're believers uh one of the things that we talked about in our series on faith and we're real really still kind of connected we're still connected to that even with faith and love because we have to begin to understand we have to begin to shape our our our, our thoughts yeah. our, our our responses mm -hmm. everything about us 
We have to begin to shape it according to the word of God. Yeah. We just can't go on feelings. Feelings would get you in trouble. Because, because the great thing, the interesting thing about both definitions uh, of the Collegiate Dictionary, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, and even the Urban Dictionary, they had butterflies and, and emotions and feelings. Mm -hmm. But here's the question. What happens when the butterflies go away? What happens when the feelings, mm -hmm. you feel opposite? What happens when you get into an argument mm -hmm. and they make you mad? What happens when they say something to disrespect you? What happens yeah. when, when, when pain and hurt, which is just a part of life, yeah. the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of all of them, but he still says many of the afflictions of the righteous. So we go through things even in relationships. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing most people have, some people have the mistake of thinking is, is that when you get in a relationship, everything is going to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to be perfect. Everything is going to be peaches and cream. And the right. truth of the matter is relationships are work. I don't care if it's a marital relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a dating relationship. I don't care if it's a friendship. I don't care if it's a parent relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a mentor mentee relationship. I don't care if it's an employee employer relationship. Yeah. I don't care if it's a coworker relationship, whatever relationship relationships take work and when we go only by our emotions we set ourselves up for failure yeah. and so so our first point is is understanding that god is love if god is if god is going to set the tone for what we have we have to understand who he is mm -hmm. so god understanding that god is love first john 4 and 8 says but anyone who does not love does not know God for God is love. First John 4 16 says, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is, ooh, excuse me. God is love yeah. and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. And so what I'm trying to get you to see is that God, uh, love is not just an attribute of God. Yeah. It is not just something he does. It is who he is. God loves, God is just, it's just a part of his nature. It's a part of who he is. Even if God didn't want to love, he had no choice because that's just a part of who he is. And this is so important because so many people are trying to work for God's love. So many people think that their love, that God, their love, that God's love for them is based on how they act, mm -hmm. is based on their performance. And so many of us are, are working for God to love us instead of just receiving that God loves right. us. It's just accepting that no matter what we do, mm -hmm. no matter what we say, God loves us. Yeah. This is, this is so important. I'm going to be very, very simple because I want you to get this because it's amazing how people will say, I know God is love, but then when they make a mistake, they run from God. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought you said God was love. Mm -hmm. When things were going good, God was love. But even when things are going bad, God is God is love. When things are indifferent, God is love. When you're on a mountaintop, God is love. When you're in the valley, God is love. Yeah. God never changes who he is. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so if he was love with David when he messed up, yeah. he's love with you when you messed up. Yeah. And he He's going to be loved with your grandchildren when they mess up. Yeah. God is love. Some people type that in. Yeah. God is love. If, when we get this revelation that God is love, it will change everything about us. Yeah. It will change how we walk. It will change our confidence in who he is. It will change how we begin to operate and begin to move 
even in life. Amen. When we build up this point that God just doesn't love, but he is love. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. This will literally change everything. This Amen. will literally begin to put you on a level that you would never imagine. Yeah. You know what? You Some of us need to just take time every day and say, God is love. Mm -hmm. God is love. Lady E, God is love. Right. God is love. This is so, so important. And so when we understand the revelation that God is love, uh, uh, then we must sense, since God, since he is, since, since God is love, he demonstrates his love. It is just not who he is. It flows through him to everything he does. John 3, 16, and you're going to read this scripture a few times today. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is going to be our foundational scripture. As we're in the midst of this series of faith and love, this is going to be our foundation because not only do we see love in here, but we see faith. Where is faith? It says that whosoever, whoever believes in him, that is another word for faith. That is another word for trust. When you read the book of John, he really doesn't use faith. He used belief or belief of some, some form. And so so here, God is saying, not only am I love, but love flows through me. Yeah. And because I loved the world, I didn't just do so. I did something to demonstrate that I love them. And the reason why I demonstrated some about my love for them is because I am love. Yeah. When I created humanity, I, I was love. Mm -hmm. I created them out of love. And so what is it showing? It's showing us that our foundation of everything we do has to be love. Why? Because remember we was talking about faith and we talked about faith is how the father functions. And we must understand that not only God operates, the father functions by faith, but his foundation of how he functions is love. Oh my goodness. His foundation of everything he does is love. And God gave me this revelation. He said, think about this, son. Think about this. Even the fruit of the spirit. It said the fruit of the spirit is love. And think about this. Everything flows out of love. Patience is just love waiting. That's true. <laughs> Mercy is just love uh, holding back what you don't, holding back what you do deserve that's negative. Yeah. Grace is just love giving you something that you don't even deserve. Wow. Long suffering is just love enduring on your behalf. When God should bring the wrath, he is long suffering. He is patient. And why? Because his foundation is love. I don't care what mistakes you made. I don't care what you've done mm -hmm. there is nothing that can separate you from his love right. why because god is love whenever you're near god you're surrounded by love mm -hmm. and so here's what we have to understand since god is love he demonstrates it. He yeah. demonstrates it. And we see that in John 3, 16. And so we have to understand this ain't just what God does. This is who he is. Mm -hmm. And so our definition, us defining love, it is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent, intentionally, intentional commitment towards another. I love this. I got this from the Amplified. It is the reasoning, intentional spiritual devotion inspired by God to another. And because here's the thing we have to understand. Love is not an emotion. I'm going to let that sink in. Love is not an emotion. Emotion. Love can be emotional, mm -hmm. but love is not emotion. Love is a decision. Oh my goodness. When, when God chose to love us, mm -hmm. if he went and, and God, and we see in the Bible where God gets angry, mm -hmm. where God uh, gets sad, he, he repents. We see that emotions in Jesus. When Jesus got angry and flipped over the tables mm -hmm. in, in, in the synagogue, we see Jesus wept. And so Jesus had a variety of emotions. So God has emotions, but because he is love and he chooses to love you, 
you. There is nothing you can do. Think about all of what humanity has done towards God. And not for one moment has God ever said, you know what? I'm not going to love you no more. Think about it. Think about God blew into us the breath of life and gave us his himself and created us in his image and his reflection. God put us in the garden Mm -hmm. where we had everything he wanted. He created a woman for man and they got to live in a perfect setting and we messed that up. Yes. And then after that, we got Cain and Abel, Cain killing Abel. We got sin after sin after sin after sin. Mm -hmm. And even at his most angriest with us, when the flood came, his love still showed up in that he spared no one his family. And so God is constantly extending his love even when we don't deserve it. It's not about what we deserve. It's not about your performance. It's about God making the decision because I am love. I'm not going to let what you do change me. That's right. Oh, that, that, that's powerful right there because so many people are giving power to other people. I'm not going to love them because they did this. And what you have done is you've given them power to change you. Wow. Why? <laughs> because look at it this way. Look at it this way. When they show up, your whole attitude changes. Huh. You go from laughing and smiling to being mad and upset. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And you have given them the power. And what God is saying, because I am love, I'm not going to give anyone the authority to change who I am. Because I am who I am, and I'm not going to apologize for who I am, and I've chosen to love you. I've made an intentional, rational decision to love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. This this is the love of God, and and we don't deserve it, but it don't matter. It don't matter. And so what we got to do now is we got to show you in the word, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that God demonstrates his love and that God shows his love to us. The Old Testament scripture about the love of God for the believer. And and, and in the mouth of two or three witness, a truth is established. Here are at least three scriptures that we're going to deal with. We're going to hit real quickly that shows the love of God is is the will uh, for the believer. All right, let's go to the first one. Deuteronomy 33 and 3, New King James. Deuteronomy 33 and 3. Write these down. Please be taking notes because I want you to go back and meditate on these. Deuteronomy 33 and 3 says, yes, he loves the people. Yes, he loves the people. All his saints are in his hand. They sit down at your feet. Everyone receives your word. And so what I want you to get with that, he loves his people. He loves his people. There is nothing, and we see this time, we see this even with the children of Israel. God would love them, build them up, bless them, uh, give them things that, that blew their mind, bring them out of bondage, bring them across a Red Sea, turn bitter waters into sweet, bring them before the promised land, and then they don't have faith in him. They don't even go in. He promised them this land, brings them right to. And so he makes them wander for 40 years. That generation dies. He raises up another generation. And they, they're they going. He's loving them. He's doing supernatural things. He's, he's showing up to places. And they're being afraid yeah. because of the, 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 the uh, reputation that God has done for them. But then they go and they do something they ain't supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And so constantly God is showing his love and being, being pulled away. But he never takes away his love. So Jeremiah 31 and 3 says this, the Lord has appeared of old to me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Oh my goodness. He is drawing you with his loving kindness. God says, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to love you so much and ain't nothing you can do about it. And my intention is that my love for you will draw you near me. I'm going to not just give you a love. He says an everlasting love, an eternal love that can I blow your mind? Even if you choose to go to hell, my love still is there. 
Oh wow. my God. Even if you choose to make your abode in hell, you still will not get away from the love of God. He says from eternity to eternity, I have made up my mind that I'm going to love you. Oh, that we should be shouting on that. Uh, uh, Zephaniah 317 says, the Lord, your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. (laughs) He will rejoice over you with singing. He, He says that I'll show my love so strong to you at times you won't be able to say a word. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is good. He said, I will, you will feel my love. You will experience my love so much that you're going to be silent. You, you ain't yeah. going to be able to say nothing. You, and you ain't going to be, all you can be. Mm. Have you ever, have you ever just thought about how good God is? Have you ever just thought about how good God has been yeah. to you? Have you ever just thought about the things he's you he's yeah. forgiven you for and yet he still loves you? Have you ever thought just sat and thought about all the things he's brought you through? It'll make you quiet. It it it'll get you it'll get you choked up. Yeah. It'll get some tears coming down your face. Why? Because you know you didn't deserve it, but he said it didn't it don't matter what you deserve. It's a matter about what I'm giving. And because yeah. I'm giving everlasting love, I'm giving love that'll get you quiet at times. I'll get you love that'll make you choke up and sing praises yeah. unto me. Why? Because I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Let's go to one more. Let's go to one. Uh, Hosea 11, 4. I drew them with gentle cords, with bands of love. I was to them as those who take the yoke from their neck. I stooped. And fed them. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! He said. He said. I with with bands of love. The bands of love caused him to scoop low and feed you. Oh my goodness! You know when he says in Genesis one twenty, and it says, "And the Lord God blessed them." That word "bless" is Barak. It means that God kneeled down. Oh my God. When he kneeled down, he said, bless. He said, be fruitful, yeah. multiply, replenish, subdue. This said he had bands of love so much that he scooped down to feed you. you. It ain't about what you deserve once again. It's about his love for you. And so, so as we move, we want to shift to the New Testament because we want to make sure, because Old Testament is the Old Covenant. We want to make sure that this is a part of the New Covenant because we're New Covenant believers. Yeah. And so we want to make sure Sure, it lines up precept upon precept, line upon line. And just like the Old Testament, we want to give two or three scriptures because out of the mouths of two or three witness, let every word be established. Hey there, everyone. This is Pastor Roman D. And I pray that message blessed you so much. And this is Gabe. This is our youngest boy. We want to just jump in and tell you thank you for joining us on today. We still have more to share with you. But first, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Hey, what are you waiting for? Come to WillParkerJr.com. Grab your t-shirt. Grab your hoodie. You can even grab some music. Come on. Calling all business owners. We have some exciting news. I'm Pastor Roman D. Lee, pastor of Alive Church, and we have the opportunity to partner with Lit TV Network every Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Time, and we have the opportunity to impact over 50 million homes. What does that have to do with you? We're giving opportunities to business owners, to people who try to get their products out to people, to be able to advertise their business and their product on the Alive Experience. We want you to partner with us. If you're interested, text AAA to 816-670-3684. That's texting AAA to 816-670-3684. We're offering 
multiple advertising opportunities throughout the season. We're gonna throw an added bonus on. Not only will you be able to advertise a minimal of four times a month, but then we're gonna sit down with you and interview you and then air the interview on the Alive Experience TV show. And so that's getting your name out there, that's getting your face out there. And so we just wanna be a blessing. So once again, if you wanna connect with us, if you wanna learn more information, uh, do it simply by texting AAA to 816-670-3684. We look forward to connecting with you. Join Pastor Roman D. and Lady E. Sunday 10 a.m. to begin to be a difference maker. Watch on YouTube, The Alive Church KC or Facebook, Alive Church or the Alive Church KC.com for difference makers. Are you ready? Hey there everyone, this is Pastor Roman D. of Alive Church and I'm not going to keep you long. I just want to ask you a question. How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? And so I just want you to answer that question. You can put it in the comment or we understand people are a lot more private. If you go to our website, thealivechurchkc.com backslash prayer, or you can just click the link in this video and go ahead and submit your prayer request. You can either fill out the form or click the less chat and fill out your information there. We just want to be able to pray with you. Once again, how can I pray for you? Jesus. Jesus. Dripped in high fashion, Christ wear, no fear. Resurrected clothes wear, the lost run to Christ, yeah. His body, it wasn't resting in the tomb. Only what he was wrapped in was laying in the room. Jesus on mine, from the temple to the sandals. We rock the latest fashion, the devil can't handle us. Christ Jesus got us covered like this Jesus wear. Oh yeah, I feel his glory in here. God's here. Hallelujah, this Jesus on mine. Welcome to the Alive Experience. I am Lady E and this is Pastor Roman D and we pastor a live church in Kansas City, Missouri. And we are happy that you are spending your Friday night with us tonight. And I know the message that just went forth really blessed your heart, blessed your soul, and that you were able to pull out some great nuggets from that. So tonight we're just going to sit here and just have a conversation about what you just watched and be able to kind of pick Pastor's brain and ask some questions about faith in love, which is what you watch tonight. So Pastor? You know, we, we came, we did the title Faith and Love because number one, we was rolling out of our faith series. Right. But then also, you know, when you when you talk to people and you have discussions with people, it's amazing how many people have because they've been in love mm -hmm. and they've been hurt while in love. Mm -hmm. Many people make the mistake to say, I uh, love hurt them. Right. <laughs> love hurt them. And, and mm -hmm. people have been so hurt because they've been in love. And, and the truth of the matter is love didn't hurt you. The person, the person. you was in love with yes. hurt you. Yes. And, and so I think it's so important that we understand that we get back to understanding that it's vital for us to have faith in love and Absolutely. because it covers all relationships so i'm excited as we begin to dive into this series absolutely, and talk about different things absolutely faith in love so mm -hmm. let's get going okay so first i want to ask can we make the argument that until we know god come to know god mm -hmm. that we really don't know love mm -hmm. I, I think i think that's a very 
very good argument. Yes. I, I think you could you could say it because uh, uh, as we get into this series, we're mm -hmm. going to define what love is. We're going to talk about uh, where do we get that love from? Because the Bible literally says God is is love, love yes. and so everything he does flows out of his love for us mm, it's so him good. being love and that's the reason why he can love us even when we don't love ourselves Absolutely. even when we don't love him back mm. that's the reason why he could send jesus and and demonstrate his love yes. because that's who he is right the great thing about god is god never allows what we do to change who he is that's so good. You know, and, and I God. think and I think so many of us can learn from that because mm -hmm. think about this. How many times have you said, I'm not going to do this for such and such because they didn't do A, B, C or D Correct. because yeah. they're not behaving the way that I want them to behave. Then I'm going to hold back yes. me demonstrating my love for them, mm -hmm. demonstrating uh, 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 my, my gratefulness for them. Why? Because they're not doing A, B, C or D. And the great thing about God is no matter what you do, yes. you can't get away from his love. Absolutely. And, you know, just being really transparent, I was, I'm still am a person that, you know, it's once you break trust with me, it's really hard for me to kind of bounce back from that. And so I always have to ask myself, you remember those back of the day bracelets that said, what would Jesus do? <laughs> uh -huh. And I always have to ask myself, like, literally, what would Jesus do? Because I know mm -hmm. that there have been times where I walked away and I've done things that I shouldn't have done, but because of God's love, because mm -hmm. of his mercy and his grace, he did not turn away from me. And so I have to extend that love mm -hmm. to others as a believer, but it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard at yeah. times. And, and it's, it's mm -hmm. something you have, you really have to, you have to work at. Yes. You, you have, you have to literally make sure it's in your kind. You put it before yourself. You mm -hmm. talk to yourself at times Absolutely. because sometimes, you know, because we as humans, we have to work at it. Yes. <laughs> let, let's just, let's just keep it a hundred we have to work at it we have to be conscious of it we have to be conscious of our decisions and our actions yes. because we literally be when we have a relationship with god we want to demonstrate that love of god Absolutely. we want people to experience that love of god and so if we're not careful we can find ourselves loving like the world Absolutely. loves instead of loving like our god loves. Absolutely. and that rolls into to my next point that i was going to ask you is how can we put our trust in love especially when we we've been hurt mm. because a lot of us equate love mm -hmm. the love of God to you know what we experience maybe even as husband and wife or mm -hmm. maybe you consider a parent child relationship and God's love is so much more than what we humanly physically experience here right. on earth and so I don't think we'll ever be able to fully understand or grasp mm -hmm. his, his true love for us but when you've been hurt it's hard mm -hmm. to believe that that God would not turn away from you mm -hmm. when you do things that don't honor him. Yeah. And, and, and I think one of the first things we got to understand is it, 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 when we, when we're experiencing that hurt, we have to allow ourselves to heal. Mm -hmm. You know, I say, I mm -hmm. say this all the time. People jump in and out of relationships. Yes. They jump in and out uh, of, uh, of connection and bonds with people. Right. And, and I even say this, even football players, when they're hurt, they don't just stay in the game. Right. They have to at least stay out one play. Yes. And so sometimes we get damaged, we get hurt, mm -hmm. and we want to jump right back in there. And Very we true. haven't dealt with the pain. We haven't dealt with the hurt. We haven't dealt with the yes. lies and the deceit that we experience, so yes. that we can heal. So that way, when we get into the next relationship, when we start loving somebody else, we can mm -hmm. love them properly. Absolutely. And we're not mad at who, who left us Absolutely. or who rejected us. So we got to first understand we have to be willing to heal yes. from the and be honest yes. and be honest. Some Absolutely. people are walking around hurt, trying to lie to themselves and everybody else. Oh, I, I, it didn't bother me. I'm Very not true. hurt. Yeah, you you yes. are hurt. It yeah. hurt you pretty bad. Yes. And so in order for you to move forward, you got to first deal with where you are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, that just comes down to me to self-worth because mm -hmm. when you really understand that God loves you no matter what mm -hmm. and that he created you in his image and his likeness and how much he loves you, you begin to then develop a love for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you don't put yourself in positions where you're not going to be honoring yourself. And when you can really receive God's mm -hmm. love, you can really mm -hmm. understand who you are mm -hmm. and begin to extend that love to other people. And so, mm -hmm. you know, 
if you are in a situation where you are hurt, like you said, admit that to yourself. Let yourself mm -hmm. know, like, I need to get into therapy. I need to talk to someone. Right. I need to deal with this mm -hmm. because I can't keep on this cycle of just perpetual mm -hmm. anger or, you know, resentment. Yep. And so those things, those things build up in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how do we differentiate between people's love and God's love? Oh, here, here's a, here's a big thing. People's love in many cases mm -hmm. has stipulations to it. Absolutely. B it, depending on your performance, depending on how you act, mm -hmm. depending on where you are, depends on how much I love you. That that's mm -hmm. what that's what a human love, human human love, or the world love says. This, hey, love those who love you, mm -hmm. love those who treat you well, and when they stop treating you well, you have a right to cut them off. Absolutely. You have a right to to hit them where it hurts. You have a right to do all these other things. But but God's love is an unconditional it love. It is God. Yes love is a love that I've made up my mind that I'm going to love you. So there's nothing you can do to right. stop me from loving you. You know, our definition that we gave for faith and love, we gave, uh, it says unselfish, loyal, benevolent, intentional commitment towards another. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that jumped out to me was that intentional commitment towards another. That wow. means you made up your mind that I'm going to love Absolutely. you. And when we look look at humanity, God has already made up his mind. Even before he breathed life into man and man became a living being, yes. he made up in his mind that he was going to love us. Mm -hmm. And that's why we always say at the heart of God is humanity. Mm -hmm. At the heart of God is humanity because mm -hmm. God's love for us is demonstrated in everything. You waking up this morning was a demonstration Absolutely. of God's love for you. Absolutely. You having a family that can tell you, you love, they love you and embrace and enjoy, that is an expression of God's love. You being connected to a church is an expression of God's yes, love. Really All of these mm -hmm. things we have to understand is God demonstrated his unconditional love for us. Absolutely. You know, Pastor, this was one of my next points, but one of the ways that I can always tell if somebody really understands that God loves them is that when they make a mistake, are they going to come mm. back to church the next Sunday? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to run off and we can't find them anymore? And so what makes people when they make a mistake, run from God hmm. or, or not show up, to, you mm -hmm. know, to church or, or just kind of feel that shame and regret mm -hmm. because in my eyes, they're kind of looking at it like mm -hmm. how, how we have stipulations, people, you mm -hmm. know, if you do X, Y, and Z, then I'm going to love you. God is not like that, but people still take mm -hmm. on that mentality that, oh, I messed up mm -hmm. last night. I can't, I can't go to church this morning. Like, right. you know, right. And, and I think, I think some of that problem comes from people dealing with other people, mm -hmm. even people in the church. Absolutely. Because sometimes people and, and, and people just say that people in the church can be just, but people in general can be judgmental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People in general, when you make mistakes, instead of them lifting you up, instead of you them loving you through it, yes. they can beat you over the head with it. Absolutely. But here's the great thing about God. God wants to deal with the issue mm -hmm. and help you get over the issue mm -hmm. and then help you begin to move forward. Absolutely. And so I think one of the major problems is, is we haven't really grasped and understood how much God loves mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. when, when we understand, think about this, there, there's never really, there's never a time where God's people calls out to him and he doesn't respond in one way That's or right. another. That's right. <laughs> he, he may not respond the way we necessarily want him to, yes. but he responds every time. Yes. You may not like what he tells. He may call them sometimes a stiff neck people. We see it in the Old Testament, but at the end of the day, he's there for them. Yes. Even yes, if yes. it's their fault that they're in their mess, he's there with them. That's why he made us the promise that he would never leave us yes. nor forsake us. So God has already made a commitment to each and every one of us. Absolutely. And here's the great thing. And you can never get away from God. That's right. That's <laughs> even right. if you make, even if you decide, hey, yes. I'm going, I'm going to die and I'm going to go to hell. That's still not going to get you away from God. God you. is everywhere. His love mm -hmm. is for you. Now, now let me say this. Just because God loves you doesn't mean he's going to let you into his heaven. 
That's true. <laughs> because most people have taken love and made it seem like, hey, God, since you love me, you should allow. No, no. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, what the requirements are, because he is a loving God and he is a gracious God and he is a just God. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, you just got to deal with the consequences that you made. Absolutely. That mm -hmm. kind of leads me into, let's talk about this, this whole idea of um, believers being judgmental. Mm judgmental believers and just how does that play a role into people accepting the love of God? Mm -hmm. I think that plays, plays a big role because, and, and I think what people have to do is we have to be careful, especially if a person comes to you, right? So, Hey, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. That's when the compassion of Jesus needs to fill your Absolutely. heart. That's when the love of God, because think about this. There, there have been so many times people like the woman who was caught in adultery, they came and they threw her at Jesus. Feet. Yeah. <laughs> they, they literally caught her in the act and she was wrong for doing what she did. But did she deserve to be ridiculed mm -hmm. like that? Did she deserve to be publicly scorned right. that way? And that's what religion would do. Religion would say, because you did this, you made this mistake Absolutely. and it takes you and throws you and publicly humiliates you. Yes. But God, the love of God says, hey, I will deal with them and then I will deal with you in your situation. Yes. But notice this, he doesn't condemn but he doesn't be like, hey, what you did was all right. Go on back and keep doing it. Right. No, he says, go and sin no more. Yes, and correction is part of love. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. if, we, if he didn't correct our children, you know, if mm -hmm. God did not correct us, then that would not be love. So correction correct. is a part of love. Mm -hmm. And I think some of, sometimes that people get that twisted and they think you're being judgmental. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as a believer, we have to understand that we are the first um, view of showing God's love to people. True. When they encounter mm -hmm. us, they're going to encounter, they should encounter a loving person, a compassionate person. They should encounter mm -hmm. the love of God yep. because when we um, come in contact with unbelievers, that should be the first point of contact that they have is to experience God's love mm -hmm. should be through us you know, as mm -hmm. his vessels. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and we got to understand we are God's representation. Absolutely. And, and so if people have a negative perspective of God, maybe we haven't done everything that we could mm -hmm. to show that love yes. of God, to show the un unconditional love Absolutely. of God, the intentional yes. love of God, where we're saying, Hey, I'm going to love you mm -hmm. on, purpose. on purpose. No matter what you do, you can cuss me out. I'm going to love you. Yes. Now let, let me, let me put a caveat here. Mm -hmm. you, you can't beat me. You can't physically abuse me. And then if you do or try to, I have to mm -hmm. defend myself and put some distance between Absolutely. me and you. Absolutely. I can love you from a distance, and but but in the same token, we have to show yeah, outside yes. of that, we have to show the love of God on a consistent Absolutely. basis. Absolutely, you know that goes back to just you know putting that caveat in there, and that's not mm -hmm. honoring and loving yourself when you mm -hmm. decide to allow somebody to abuse you, when you allow right. someone to take advantage mm -hmm. of you, you're not showing yourself love, and so that that's where it needs to start as mm -hmm. well. And I know people say you shouldn't have self self love and it's selfish and all these things but the bible says that we should love our neighbors as ourselves mm -hmm. so if we don't love ourselves then how can we love our neighbor that's true that's true that, yes. that's true because here's the thing when you love you it makes it so much easier to love Absolutely. other people. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're in a society where people are killing people left and right. And I think the main thrust of that is they don't love no, themselves. So. If I don't care about my life, mm -hmm. I'm definitely not going to care about somebody else's Absolutely life. Not. If I don't, if I don't love me, then how can you expect me to love somebody else? And so what we have to understand is we have to start teaching and training people about the love of God yes. so that they, they can receive that love and that will be the love that they love everyone else Absolutely. it's like it's like a cup if you're thirsty you don't want to go to an empty cup mm -hmm. you're not going to go to an empty, right. an empty cup cannot do anything yes. for you and that is the same way Absolutely. a person who has not received the love of god and therefore they're trying to literally love people mm -hmm. with being empty absolutely and so you know we're always talking about faith here on the mm -hmm. alive experience and so explain to us how 
um, not showing love and compassion mm-hmm. can affect your faith process mm-hmm. and as far as manifestation goes, as far as, you know, reaping your harvest. How does mm-hmm. love play a part, a part of the faith? Mm-hmm. I, I think, I think everything we do as believers is based in love. Absolutely. We receive salvation because God loved us. Yes. We have faith in Christ because Christ demonstrates that love for us. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit has come down after Jesus has left to be a comforter because of love. Absolutely. So our foundation for everything is love mm-hmm. because the foundation for God doing everything is love. Yes. Him creating us is love. Him creating Absolutely. this world is love. Mm-hmm. Him pr- putting us in a position that we've been in yes. is literally God demonstrating his love, love. towards us Absolutely. and so if we're gonna if we're if we're gonna operate in faith we have to understand that God loves us because here's the thing mm-hmm. our faith is founded in the God that we say love us Ooh, and good. so if we can't think that God or we don't believe that God loves us how are we gonna have faith in God yes how are we going to trust God Because at the core of faith is my belief in whoever's telling me whatever they're telling me. If God is telling me he's going to bless me, if God is telling me he's going to give me peace, if God's going to tell me he's going to give me joy, but I don't believe he loves me, then when I make mistakes, then I'm going to run from him. Yeah, absolutely. And we see that all the time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I even heard you um, say several times that before you even really dove into learning about faith, the first Mm -hmm. thing you studied was just the love of God Mm -hmm. and understanding standing and you know just really receiving that love because Mm -hmm. a lot of times we get saved and we don't necessarily right away begin to understand the love of God I think Mm -hmm. a lot of people just learn the law like the Ten Commandments what you're supposed to do what you're not supposed to do Mm -hmm. and really the first thing that we need to understand is love we need Mm -hmm. to understand the love of God because without that foundation you really can't receive anything Mm -hmm. else that God has available Mm -hmm. for you Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and we, we're going to say this over because so people need to get this, that God loves them. Yes. God is love, and he, 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 can, he, he will never decide to not love you. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's just a part of his nature, Absolutely. and he's not going to let not one of us change yes. who he is. He's going to love you unconditionally. Yes. He's going to love you in spite of you. Absolutely. He's going to love you when you don't perform up to a certain level. Mm-hmm. He's going to love you even if you say I will never love God yes. that has nothing to do with him loving absolutely. you and so we have to just grab a hold to it and walk in that absolutely. love absolutely you know just transparency moment there are times in my life where you know I felt like that I wasn't good enough and that you mm-hmm. know God was not going to be able to use me because I was just so performance driven by people mm-hmm. in school I wanted to make all the best grades I wanted to do all the things that would make people accept me and so just with that mentality I kind of felt like God was the same way and I had to do all these things to perform for God and we're not saved by works and so that really Mm -hmm. had to be drove into me is like no matter what you do he's still going to love you no matter what Mm -hmm. now does that mean I, I intentionally go out and sin no because my love that I have for God because of what he's done for me changes my mindset and renews my mind to where I don't even think about that sinful nature anymore mm-hmm. when I got saved. But, you know, the perfection perfectionist in me, and I know there's mm-hmm. lots of <laughs> perfectionists <laughs> out there, is we're so performance driven sometimes. Mm-hmm. And we want mm-hmm. to, to show God that we're doing X, Y, and Z. When at the end mm-hmm. of the day, at the end of your life, he's not going to ask you, what did you do? But do you know him personally? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm reminded of a scripture that said, have we not prophesied in your name? Absolutely. Have we not cast out demons? Mm-hmm. And he said, I, depart from me, for I never knew you. Yes. And, and that word to uh, to know or I never knew you is not that God like don't know your name mm-hmm. or God don't know where you live in because yes. he knows all that. What he's talking about relationally. Yes. He said, there's no connection. There's no bond yes. between me and you. you 
you never confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. You never allowed me to reign in your life. And so I can't allow you into my heaven, Ooh. into my presence. Why? Because there's no relationship. No relationship. And, and what we have to understand is that the love of God at the core of it is about relationship. relationship. The reason why he created the world, the reason why he created us is for relationship. Yes. Even when, when man fell away and man sinned, Adam in the garden, God came up with a plan. Why? Because he wanted to fulfill mm -hmm. and to fix and to mend the relationship. Absolutely. He sent Jesus to mend the relationship. So Jesus died so that we can have a relationship yes. with yes. the Father. And the only reason why God would do that is because his love for us us Absolutely. is unconditional. Let me, I, I want you to look, look at me. I want mm. you to hear me. God loves you, Love but it. no, 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 but God loves you, Period. but I did. No, no, no. God loves you. And when you embrace that yes. and when you, because here's the thing, God's love will override any of your mistakes because, because here, here's the thing that, that, that I always say, we don't go to hell for sinning. <laughs> Sin is not what's going to get you to hell. What's going to get a person to go to hell is that they reject the love of Jesus. They reject the relationship that Jesus is trying to give them. And when you reject Jesus, yeah. you reject the love of God. And therefore, you will never be able to go into his presence the way that God desires yeah, for you absolutely. to go. He said, he said, no man comes to the father except by me. John 14. So he says, yes. I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father except by me. Yes. And so the only way you will go to hell is that you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Absolutely. You know, just over the years, um, just witnessing to people and hearing people say, you know, I'm asking them to maybe come to church with me or asking mm -hmm. them to do something. They're like, you know what? I know God. I know who God is. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me one day and said, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say, Depart from me, I never knew you. You mm, may know God, wow. but does God know you? Does mm -hmm. he know you intimately? Mm -hmm. Does he know you as far as having a relationship with you? Now, we know that God knows the number of hairs on our head. Of mm -hmm. course, he knows us. But what he's talking about is a relationship. And so, so many mm -hmm. people are saying, I know who God is. I know what God can do. I know this. But do you have a relationship mm -hmm. with God? Because there's, different, there's a difference between somebody knowing me Mm -hmm. and me knowing them back right <laughs> you can know of me mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. you know hear things about mm -hmm. me but if you don't mm -hmm. have a one-on-one -on -one connection with me i'm gonna say i don't mm -hmm. i don't know him i don't know her they may know of me mm -hmm. you know like i i say you know i know td jakes but mm -hmm. does he know me <laughs> no he does not you know it's not a we don't have a personal relationship yeah. and mm -hmm. so that was the revelation that God gave me though mm -hmm. all those years ago. And I just thought, wow, because I hear that so many times when people say, I know who God is. And God is like, that's not what I'm going to ask you. Right. Do mm -hmm. I know you? Mm -hmm. Depart yeah. from me. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. yes. Before any relationship to be a relationship, both parties have to have knowledge of one another. Right. <laughs> yes. Both parties have to have knowledge of one another. If there's only one person working towards the relationship, if there's only one person yes. uh, trying to demonstrate and show the love, then it's really not a relationship. That's right. You got That's a right. stalker on your hands. Right. <laughs> and, and so and so God, God will never be a stalker, but he will constantly give you access to him. And so it's up to us to receive the love of God yes. and walk into the love of God like never before. Absolutely. So that's our time for tonight and wow it was just been so powerful if you walk away with anything tonight just hear our voice saying god loves you period that's the end no more to the story just <laughs> god loves you so thank you for hanging out with us tonight and we will be back next week and you can also catch us sunday morning live at the alive church kc.com and also on our facebook and youtube page all social media the alive church kc so i'm lady e and this is pastor roman d and we're saying thank you and remember to always walk by faith and, and not, not by, by sight, sight.
join Pastor Roman D. and Lady E. Sunday 10 a.m. to begin to be a difference maker. Watch on YouTube, The Alive Church KC or Facebook, Alive Church or TheAliveChurchKC.com for difference makers. Are you ready?